Hi, my name is Burl Gorey and I am the Field Computing Integration and Support Team Leader for Water Mission Area. In this video, I will be showing you some of the application features of SWAMI that will help you use the program efficiently. I covered installation of the programs and use of the configuration scripts in previous videos. In this video, I will show you the initial setup and basic features of the SWAMI application. When you run the SWAMI program for the first time, you will be prompted to run in demo mode. Demo mode is useful for trying out the software, but for this video we will click no. Since it's the first time the application has been run, the configuration screen is opened. Here you will tell the application where to find your configuration files that were created earlier. Each path is set by clicking the browse button and selecting the file and folder where the information is located. Let's start with the station list path. I will locate my stations.txt file and click open. Next I will set the path for meters by choosing the meters.txt file and clicking open. When you go to set the path for site defaults you will notice that the dialog box that opens is different. This is because we are selecting a folder instead of a file. I will select the site defaults folder and click OK. This is also the same for the ratings path. I will choose the ratings folder and click OK. The last configuration path is the auto backup path. This is the location that SWAMI uses to store a backup copy of the current site visit in order to be able to recover from an unplanned shutdown of the program. That's it for the basic setup. If you move files around and need to update the configuration paths later, you can get back to this form by choosing File, Config. We are finished setting the configuration path, so let's click Done. One of the features of SWAMI is to have the user verify the correct date and time every time the program is run. While this may seem annoying, it is important that you ensure that the date and time is correct as SWAMI automatically time tags many data fields based on these values. You have loaded the configuration files. You have verified the date and time, so now we are ready to enter data. There are several videos that show you how to perform specific data entry tasks in detail, so I will only demonstrate some of the program features that will help you enter data efficiently. I will show you the features that we, you will only find in SWAMI PC first, as there are just a couple. Let's start with the toolbar. From the toolbar you can create a new file, open an existing file, or save the file in progress. If it's the first time you save the file, you will get a dialog box allowing you to enter the file name. SWAMI will assign a default name which you are encouraged to use as it contains the station number and the date. You will notice the keypad buttons for many of the fields in SWAMI PC. While tapping in the text box will open the keypad in the PDA program, you must click the keypad button in SWAMI PC. The last difference between SWAMI PC and the PDA version is the ability to delete recovery files. This option is found in the Tools menu. That covers the basic differences between SWAMI PC and SWAMI PDA. Now let's look at some features they have in common and how they work. There are four keypads for entering data. For dates, there is a calendar control. Most dates are set to the current date. But for some dates, like high watermark estimates, you may need to choose a date in the past. To do this, you can click the left arrow at the top of the previous month. You can also click on the month and year label to change the calendar format to allow you to select the month. Another click switches to years, and another click returns us back to the day selection mode. Selecting the day adds it to the text box at the bottom of the form. Clicking Done returns this value to the field you were editing. Now let's take a look at the time field. To enter the current time, just click the Now button. To enter a specific time, click on the drop-down arrow on the time segment you wish to edit and choose the value. As with the date, the Done button enters the value and Cancel clears the field. One of the most used keypads will be the numeric keypad. Here are a couple of tips to remember. If you enter an incorrect number, you can set your cursor in the entry field and only replace that number. If you need to clear the entire field, you can use the button at the top right. The last keypad that SWAMI uses is an alphanumeric keypad. There are several handy features on this keypad. 
there's the caps lock key, a date insert button, a time insert button, and if you need special keys, like a plus sign for instance, you can find them by using the shift key. The last feature we will cover in this video is the auto recovery file. When you start the SWAMI program, your data is stored in a recovery file until you save it. This is to protect against losing data if the program shuts down unexpectedly. I will demonstrate this feature by forcing the application to close. Notice when we restart the application, we are prompted to load the recovery file. If you choose yes, then the program will load the data from the last automatic save. Choosing no deletes the recovery file. There are rare occasions where you may end up with multiple recovery files that don't go away on their own. If so, you can clear these by choosing delete recovery files and choosing yes when prompted for confirmation. This concludes the video. If you have any questions regarding this process, please contact the SWAMI Help Group at the email address shown or visit the FASIS website at the address shown.